Persons with disability are the world's largest minority. They're disabled by society, not just by bodies. But leaving no one behind is a very key principle of the Sustainable Development Goals. Inclusion of persons with disability is definitely key. Today, we have with us musician, filmmaker, entrepreneur, author, sound engineer, and computer scientist, Dr. Rupam Sarma. He's also the writer and director of One Little Finger. Thank you so much, Dr. Rupam, for joining us today. Hello, Ambika. I'm so grateful to you. Uh, namaste and, and the TV for having me and covering our story. Thank you. You know, um, Dr. Rupam, you know, this whole month we have dedicated on our campaign, the Banega Swast India campaign, we really dedicated it to love because, you know, February is the month of love, Valentine's Day. You know, but love is not really about just romance. It's also a lot more empathy, care, and persons with disability, I think at this point, really need it the most. Uh, and inclusion is again key, like I said earlier. So you have written as well as directed a film um, that made history. You cast over 80 persons with disability, children as well as adults. And One Little Finger has won numerous awards at film festivals, in fact, around the world. Tell us a little bit about the story. Yes, Ambika, thank you for asking. You know, One Little Finger, uh, it's a narrative feature film you know, with the theme Ability and Disability. So that was our theme. The story is about Reina, an American neurologist, you know, who goes to India to explore and research music therapy. You know, and she finds herself teaching children and adults with disabilities. You know, often the children with disabilities become victims of neglect, bullying, harassment, you know, and Reina tries to bring them together through music and inspire them to challenge themselves through their abilities. The, the film shows how their lives are transformed. Um, to me, it's not just a film, it's a movement to break the barriers of the stigma of disability. And all it takes is a change in our perspective, you know, a change in our mindset. Uh, disability is only what we perceive. You know, ability is everything that we believe. Actually, it's actually, I mean, as a society, I think like you rightly said, perception, that's what we need to change. I think the biggest stigma for people is uh, living with disabilities, the society, the barriers which we create around us. So uh, you told us about uh, the movie, you know, the storyline, and of course, the amount of awards, the number of award, awards they've, uh, you know, received at all levels. Tell us what inspired mm -hmm. you to actually uh, make a movie on a sensitive topic like this, but definitely need of the hour. Um, so it was a it was a journey, I would say, and you know, I was inspired by the life stories of the people with disabilities, and wanted to you know take on the challenge of learning more about them, you know, telling their stories to the world and creating creating a platform for them to show their abilities, not disabilities. You know, before making this film, you know, I worked on a number of projects related to um, as a musician, frequency based music and vibrations um, called Omkara. Uh, that was adopted in schools, in, in different special needs schools for stress relief or depression. And, and my earlier research work was also artificial intelligence and autism. So as you can see, my background was um, yes. involving with many projects related to that. So I was inspired and I came to know many of the organizations, children, parents, educational mm -hmm. institutions, and I was intrigued to bring their life stories and challenges they face to the big screen in a positive way, you know. Yes. And and over fifteen percent of world population live with some form yes. of disability. You know? Yes. And just in the United States, one out of forty-four children is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, and mm -hmm. people are disabled not just mentally, physically, and emotionally by by society itself. You know? yes. And disability is it's not a charity. You know, it's a mm -hmm. human rights issue. And, yes. and we have moral responsibility to, uh, to help them. And, and we all rise by lifting others. I think uh, that's really well put because what you said, it is a human right. I mean, uh, well, that's why we say we cannot afford leaving anybody behind. We've also been, you know, uh, I was reading about it also, how it affects the economy, the GDP. We are gonna be talking about that. You know, you did say about music, uh, you've been working in that, whether it's working with autism and music is something you've also, um, uh, got the Guineas, uh, you've created a Guineas world record for composing and directing a musical journey for world peace. Uh, Rupam, also, we know what music means to you, but as uh, music is also has a healing power. Uh, you know, tell us 
what do you know i mean how can music really help us tell us about music therapy and how can it help persons with disability yes i'm glad that you asked that um as you know as being indian the ancient mm -hmm. art of sound healing is a new science today as music therapy you know we all know yeah. that certain types of musics tone rhythm has healing power especially indian mm -hmm. classical music you know classical Raga. ragas ragas yes. you know many slokas the sound of om mm -hmm. and a chakra chakra energies and the hymns that originated from vedas and upanishad you know yes. we are we know that as as indians um uh, our emotions rule our body and mind as we know that you know different musical instruments and sound harmonics have been used as a healing tool around the world for thousands of years you know for example um, many instruments like didgeridoo in australia sound of coal in Vaishnav culture you know, hymn chanting crystals flute uh, tibetan bells singing bowls you know sufi music and and so on and and we see many different mathematical and geometrical patterns in in the nature as well and the nature has music as well so all of this combination of those in becomes a music therapy uh, in a yeah. loose term and uh, we have been experimenting with different frequencies and vibrations and see what it can help so as i said my earlier project omkara was used in different schools and there was great results coming from those exercises in schools and after school programs. But I wanted to take uh, one step forward, trying to see how, what happens in the brain. You know, that's yeah. where it comes, the neuroplasticity, you know, what, what changes the brain say? patterns? Yes. Yeah, what, what affects brain signals? You know, yes, we can say that music heals, but what mm -hmm. is the proof? I want to take a scientific approach to it and mm -hmm. see, can we see the brain patterns and can we replicate that from one person to another? That's what we're working on. You know, I mean, that's uh, really well explained. I mean, just going back to the movie, you know, working with 80 persons with disability, and anyway, it's difficult to work with children and when we're talking about adults, how challenging was it? Because it, it, I was reading it took you five years to complete the film. Uh, yes, it was quite challenging to start with mm -hmm. you know, many unknowns, um, as we had many children and young adults with various disabilities. That was a challenge, you know, because of various disabilities. You know, many people had cerebral palsy, um, could have hearing impairment, visual impairment, they could not see, could not mm -hmm. talk, and some of them has um, mental disabilities and other forms of disabilities. So that was definitely a challenge for us. It took so long because we, we tried to understand them. I had a great team and you know, we worked um, together as a team. I do not want to take all the credits. So we all worked together and, and trying to conduct some workshops and help them to train and uh, teach them how to act, how to communicate, how to, um, uh, how to be in front of camera and yeah. many other to, those things that we try to teach them. And there's challenges coming from, mm -hmm. on, and a lot of hurdles that we have to go through. Um, I, I can share one of the stories that might be interesting to you. Yes, um, of course, there, and, and when we started this project and we approached some of the financier investors and they liked the story, they said that, yes, uh, go for it. And we started uh, making this film. Mm -hmm. Because I was writing a book before that, um, and they write this story, they write the screenplay. So uh, while we were working on the project, and after seeing that the challenges that we have gone through, um, they did not like that. They said that it's going to it's going to fail and replace all the children with professional actors. Otherwise, they are not going to fund this. Um, and I refused. I refused. I said, okay, the the whole purpose of this film is ability and disability. You know, yes. if we want to hire hire professional actors, that defeats the purpose of this film. So I'm not going to Absolutely. do that. So so they they walked out of it, and we continued, and that actually took more time than we anticipated. So actually, Sayom Dev was leading the, in the leading actor's role, and he also won the award. He told us, you know, for him to memorize, to understand the script, learn it, and then to perform front of camera. Right? That 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 was yes. a challenge, but. And even sense. for you, I mean, tell us, I mean, I'm sure there were incidents. So again, finance getting off or, you know, somebody that is again a societal, again, a challenge. But also when you're talking about interaction, like if somebody couldn't hear, how were you giving directions? I mean, 
these were all i think things which uh, i mean <clears throat> it's not easy to because again again it's not something which is some you're doing on often i mean if you're directing a you know person with a hearing issue how how is he listening to your uh, you know commands um it was challenging no doubt about it so um it was a learning curve for my team and me to understand each of them as you said uh, someone who has the he hearing impairment you know how can we give direction huh? yeah. and it was an experiment for me mm -hmm. um just to give an example of Hinea, she's an actress from you know south india and she has, mm -hmm. she cannot speak and she cannot hear um even with his, with her hearing devices, she can hear only like a buzzing sound. Uh, she has no understanding of words, no understanding of modulation of words. She cannot hear song or anything like that. So it was a challenge. So, but you know, thankfully she can read words. Um, this like simple English words she can write, uh, she can read. And what we did, we presented her some words so that she understands, say, you know, cry. She knows uh, what the crying means or the read <laughs> the actions, you know? Yeah. So we had to find ways to communicate to her. And initially mm -hmm. I had challenges. I tried to use sign language that did not work well either in a, in a film situation. And, mm -hmm. and I realized that you know, her technique was um, finding the vibrations. I did not understand that um, initially, but they have a strong capability of understanding or finding, tuning with the right vibrations of people. Um, mm. If she touches you, she can feel your vibration. Uh, she can feel, she can read your lips, um, lip syncing. Um, that she can do. Understanding, so, so those... I think you must have really understood them well. So that's what, you know, our theme of the month, that's why it is. It's all about love and empathy, care, recognizing the ability. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Rupu, when we talk, I mean, obviously the, the theme of the film was ability in disability and you worked closely with them for five years. So how important is it to empower people with disability? I mean, to believe in them. Um. You know, empowering means you know giving them independence. Mm. You know, take them out of the box so that they can do anything they want to do in this life. You know, if we can let them do whatever they want to do, you know, do not focus on the disabilities. Find things that they they're passionate about, they love to do, and if we can, you know, help them to get there, and that means giving them independence to do what they want to do. You know, and of course, we we need to give them a you know reasonable platform to succeed. You know, give them a reasonable accommodation in any situation, mm -hmm. where it's a workforce or or acting or the media field. We have to um, we have to adjust to some extent. Um, yes. It's all about creating a better society. You know, loving and inclusive yeah. society, as you said. You know, yes. people with disabilities have fewer opportunities to learn or get a job. And when I asked mm -hmm. many people, uh, Dan, Jiza, and many others, they said, you know, we want to be independent. You know, we need to get a job. Um, yeah. And most of them are underemployed or unemployed, as you see. Yes, that's a huge challenge. Yeah, and, it, we, because they, and don't they want get to be independent. Same. Yes, and that, that independence. So when we uh, talk about inclusion, again, how can we really ensure that persons with disability have access to resources and opportunities? I mean, whether it's employment, whether it's accessibility to go any, anywhere, because there are so many challenges at every point in their life. So how can we make sure that they are really included in the, in the true sense, inclusion again, saying that they're part of the society, but honestly, how can we, in, if I can, I mean, how can we really include them in the true sense? Um, yeah, it's it definitely, it's a human rights issue and we need to work together as a society. You know, if we do not mm -hmm. do anything, there's a cost of exclusion. There is a huge cost of ex exclusion. As you said earlier about GDP, yes, absolutely. You know, if some, some percentage of what, 23 million disabled people in India join the workforce or 15% of world population join the workforce, See what it happens. Like, you know, they will they, they will yes. yeah they will contribute to society as taxpayers. 
and have a positive impact on GDP. Um, in terms of, we need to raise awareness, you know, create a competency-based education model. And I strongly believe that we need to have a non-traditional model, a competency-based educational model, so that we can train them uh, with job-oriented skills and skills, connect yeah. with em employers mm -hmm. and government systems, you know, providing some reasonable accommodation uh, for them to succeed. You know, government can take steps to build ramps in public places and, mm -hmm. and with advanced technology these days with artificial intelligence, we can build assistive devices, you know, that can definitely help them with, uh, whether it's prosthetics or hearing devices or visualization, visualization techniques. But we yeah, need to so find a not... different, Yes, and they're independent in every aspect, like you rightly said, and definitely technology as well as education are the key here when we're talking yes. about really accessibility. Uh, just uh, something again I would want to know about, tell us the aim of One Little Finger Global Foundation. What is it about? Uh, we started this nonprofit foundation and our goal is to create an inclusive platform for all, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's persons with disabilities or underserved communities or underprivileged communities, you know, we, we work with all of them. And mm -hmm. our main focus areas are three areas, um, education, um, media, and research. You know, as I mentioned about education, and we need to provide and create a competency-based education to persons yes. with disabilities and underserved communities, you know, uh, who are unable to get proper education, either due to financial reasons or lack of time or other reasons. So that's one. And the second one is the media. Um, yes. We are a non-political organization. Um, we work on media, means film, music, literature. You know, we created an all-inclusive platform to help a deserving artist to work on various different projects. You know, we're currently working on um, a couple of projects uh, supporting Cancer Foundation and another music project with children with disabilities. Wonderful. Uh, and the third one is the research. And I mentioned about the neurological neuro research that is yes. ongoing, and we're starting a counseling, music, and brain research center. Um, we're delayed because of the COVID for the last couple of years, yes. um, but we're still continuing our neuro research, and we hope to experiment with various activities and music to see how we can you know, stimulate neurons uh, that could help the uh, help with focus, attention, you know, or early intervention with autism and mental depression. And those are the three main focus areas for our foundation. Wonderful. In fact, wish you all the best for the research, which is really happening. I think that could be a real breakthrough. Just the last question, uh, Dr. Rupam, you, uh, you were born in India, in Guwahati, and now you're in California. When we, of course, we've understood about the work, the movie, when we, when we are specifically talking about persons with disabilities, uh, how different is the approach in both the countries, where you're living now and where you were really born? Um, yes, I, I was born in Assam, Jorhat. <laughs> um, I, I think the world has changed. What we have seen back in those days when I was growing up in India, um, there is a misunderstanding of them. And I would say we kind of single out as persons with disabilities back in those days and other countries. I have seen similar situation in other countries as well. They have challenges to find opportunities. But, but think about it for a second here. Now, when we talk about race, color, religion, and all of those areas, what do you talk about? We talk about the general population. And think about when we talk about disability. We are like we are one group of disabled people versus all other people that's as well, normal people with race, color, and all other, um, all other areas that we talk about. But when we talk about disability, we only talk about disability. Um, so there is a change of mindset that needed, and we need to bring them and include them as part of the society. And that requires a change of mindset. A yeah, change of mindset, you know, I mean, I think we need to respect them. We need to understand them. We need to include them. And it's not about them and us. I think... They are part of us. You know, I think yes. that's what's most important. Thank you so much, Dr. Rupa, for joining us today. And uh, all the best for this research. And thank you so much once again. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks to NDTV.